Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, we're going to be continuing from where we left off in the last one, where and that was where we focused on the open close principle. And so today's one, we're going to be doing Liskov's substitution principle. I decided to go with slides this time, as um, this kind of requires a bit more of a explanation in terms of what the definition of this principle is. Um, it's also at first a bit kind of well for me, it was quite. Um, intimidating um, to read the definition compared to the open close principle or the single responsibility principle. However, unlike the other two principles, this one is um, like well defined as like with the single responsibility principle, um, you know, like a class should have like a single purpose and that's quite ambiguous. Uh, and the same can also kind of be said for the open close principle in that like it, the definitions are open for interpretation, whereas this one is just more of a clear cut uh, definition. So then what is the need for the list of uh, principle before we get dive into the definition? Um, so it's quite easy to abuse, inher abuse inheritance uh, like within your projects. And like in the last video with the open close principle, we did do quite a bit of inheritance there but that was more or less needed but as you can see it's quite once you see how um, useful inheritance can be it can be quite easy to just keep on adding more and more layers of inheritance however that can also lose uh, allow you to lose track of what classes should do uh, and just add to more confusion so like you kind of forget like what's the point what's the purpose of this class what is it doing and uh, this is where the uh, list of substitution principle steps in so the definition uh, or the actual definition of the list of uh, substitution principle is um, yeah so let phi x be a property approvable of uh, about objects x of type t then phi y should be true for objects y of type s where s is a subtype of t so there is a lot going on there and if you're anything like me i was yeah pretty confused when i first read this um, but yeah, you can kind of break it down um, if you think long and hard about it, I guess. But it's still kind of, um, I mean, if you're not familiar with theoretical um, definitions like me, um, then this can, of course, be quite intimidating. However, there are some boiled down versions of this definition. So, yeah, another way to put it is a child class uh, is child class objects should be able to replace the parent class without breaking the integrity of the application. And what does that mean? That basically means whatever the parent can do, the descendant should be should at least be able to do that too. Um, and that I think is probably the highest level of this definition I can get to. Um, but I, I hope like when we jump into the coding uh, example, uh, everything becomes a lot more clearer. And yeah, I mean, for me, with the uh, Liskov substitution principle, uh, it definitely starts to click when you see an example. And um, yeah, like, hopefully by the end of this video, uh, I managed to do that for you. So unlike the last two coded examples for the single responsibility principle and the open close principle, um, this one A is going to remain quite short, as we're only focusing on how the Liskov substitution principle can be broken. Um, and you'll see why, like, yeah, I mean, we, we could do a solution to it, to the problem that we create. Um, however, there are multiple work, workarounds for it. And it's more about just the best way to understand this principle is by looking at how it's broken, in my opinion. Um, so we'll do that. Um, yeah, so we can start off with creating a calculator. Um, and this just has a simple setting method, which is calculate. Um, and this takes in a number uh, or two parameters, um, number one and number two. And yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of, I, I realize like there's no point with me doing all this like typing in Python um, as yeah, it adds no value. So um, I'm trying to just keep it as simple as possible. Um, without having to focus or having too many lines of code for these um, explanations. So this one will just return um, 
number one multiplied with number two, like so. And we can do we can create the uh, we can print out just a uh, calculation two arbitrary numbers so uh, three and four and three um, and we can run that um, like so and we get 12 um, which is working fine uh, everything looks fine right now um, however uh, we can now use calculator as a parent class to implement a different kind of calculator so we can do um, class um, divider calculator like so and that inherits from calculator and what we can do is override the calculate function and again number one and number two and we can return number one divided by number two, like so. And we can do, instead of calculator, we can do the, we can use the divider. And if we did, let's say 12 and three, so we run that, we get 12 and four or 4.0, which is fine. Um, however, the, error here, or the error in which we'll see now, uh, is if we did divide a calculator dot calculate, and we did 12 and 0, and as a uh, number can't be divided by 0, we will get an error. So, yeah, we get the 0 division error, division by 0, as we can't divide 12 by 0. And, yeah, so... This is where like, uh, it really shows that we've um, violated the uh, Liskov substitution principle because originally, uh, before we added the divider calculator, um, the calculate method only re always returned a number. So it always returned number one and times number two. So whether we could pass in any number, it always returned that. Uh, given that everyone knows that... Um, you can pass in uh, like an integer value or a float. So let's just assume everyone already knows that. The problem with Python is that, um, yeah, it's not typed in that way. Uh, but anyway, um, but here we're also passing in a number and a number. So with 12 and zero. So these two things are like, you know, we've um, conform conformed to that. Um, and then we do number one divided by number two, where two is zero, number two is zero, and number one is 12, which um, gives us an, an error. Uh, so not only now does the calculate um, method return a number, it can also return a error with the divider calculator. So the divider calculator, following like the rules that we pointed out um, um, in the in the slides, which is that the uh, child classes or the children um, should uh, must be able to or should at least be able to do what the um, calculator uh, or the parent does, and this is where it's not conforming to the um, parent. So yeah, that's um, that's really it. You can also like imagine this, I guess, like with. Um, let's say a cat, like a cat can eat a um, cat eats cat food, like normal cat food you get from the pet shop. Uh, and then we can create like a subclass um, or we can create a tiger class which inherits from the cat and the uh, tiger doesn't eat cat food like from the pet shop, it eats meat. Um, and there like you have like that kind of, uh, the, the Liskov substitution principle is violated there as well. Um, because a tiger isn't um, can't do what its parent can do uh, when it comes to eating. The same way with uh, the divider calculator, we um, the the calculate method for divider calculator isn't the same with the or doesn't work the same way as calculate does in just the base calculator method. Um, yeah, like I said, we won't focus on the workaround. I mean, you could create like a base calculator which does like 
addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So all the basic stuff that a calculator does. Um, and then from there, you can extend on that um, and create a calculator, which and just fill those in and add whatever extra functionality you want to it. But this is just um, like us breaking the Liskov substitution principle. And um, yeah, that's, that's really it. Uh, the code for this, again, will be on the GitHub repo, um, which I'll post in the link in the description. I'll also post the slides, so if you're interested in um, checking the slides out, then feel free to do that. Um, yeah, other than that, like, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, this gave you some idea of um, what the Liskov substitution principle is. Uh, to point out, it is something that you can't really tell ahead of time. Uh, you kind of have to do or write the code and then look back and say and see whether or not like am I violating the Liskov substitution principle um, and then from there work backwards um, whereas I think with like the um, single responsibility principle it's pretty straightforward you know how to do that um, ahead of time and I guess also for the open close principle um, but yeah I hope I really hope that this um, drove the de definition home for you uh, and yeah, at least a starting point for like further reading around um, this principle. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you in my next videos.